in the world of cars, it's unorthodox, almost unacceptable, for a vehicle to stick around, for nearly a decade, without any significant updates. Sure, a couple of facelifts and some neat new features parsed out over the years keep things fresh and interesting, but it's also a wonderfully effective way to make a car feel real old, real tired, real quick. Naturally, there are exceptions to the rule. With this the Nissan 370Z. It's been about 9 years since the 370Z first landed as a new car for the 2009 model year, hardly a drop in the bucket considering the rich lineage, but an eternity by all other accounts. Whichever rivals the Z has left, they've become either lighter or heavier, cheaper or more expensive. Turbocharged. Direct injected. More technologically advanced. Friendlier to drive. The Z has stayed the course and it's graying out the temples. Its forehead more wrinkled and hands more weathered than you remember. But slipping into the part leather, part Alcantara cabin of the full Zoot 370Z Mismo, suddenly none of that matters. Scoffing at the idea of turbochargers and direct injection, the badge on the back directly correlates to the engine size. Power comes from a normally aspirated, 3.7-liter V6 engine. Base and mid-range models pump out a respectable 332 horsepower and 270 pounds FT of torque, while in Nismo flavor, that's cranked up to 350 horsepower and 276 pounds FT. Nissan and Infiniti, faithful know this engine well. Part of the VQ family. It wakes up with a mischievous purr at the poke of the starter button. Peg the throttle and, while not as silky as some other six-cylinder coupes out there, the BMW M240i comes to mind, the Z awakens with a guttural howl past 4,000 RPMs. Suffice it to say, the Z is still equal parts bark and bite, even if that bite isn't as strong as it used to be. Still, driving a Z is refreshing. It's not for everyone, but there's a pleasant weight and mechanical feel to the Z that you'd be hard-pressed to find anywhere else these days. The steering is heavy and communicative, and because it's a hydraulic setup, there aren't any buttons to adjust how much effort it takes to turn the wheel. The shifter, though not as buttery smooth as a Mazda MX-5 Miata, is pleasantly notchy and easily manipulated. The clutch lets you know exactly when it bites and pushes back on your foot just enough, but not to the point where you regret skipping leg day. Fully disabling the stability and traction control safety nets is a one-button process. It does take a bit of a deep stab at the throttle to nail a perfect rev match downshift, but the throttle is still properly responsive and it's easy to drive this car smooth. Or in anger. The exhaust note is nothing short of intoxicating, and what you hear isn't electronically manipulated or amplified by any speakers whatsoever. Of course, the soundtrack is just part of what the Nismo trimmings offer. It's a fairly complete package, you get a few mechanical bits, including the aforementioned power bump and exhaust system, plus beefed up brakes peeking through a set of lovely 19-inch split 5-spoke alloy wheels and Dunlop summer rubber and a laundry list of chassis tweaks, including upgraded springs and dampers, and more bracing. They add up to a bit of a harsh and noisy ride, but come on! When you're driving a sports car, compromise is often the name of the game. Contrary to our friends south of the border, where you could opt for a Z Nismo with a 7-speed automatic transmission, Canadian spec cars are available exclusively with a 6-speed manual with rev matching. Do yourself a favor and leave that tuicky off, though. You also get a few showy bits, including a body kit, not as shouty as you'd think, and the ducktail style spoiler is reminiscent of a Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7, and a few neat touches inside, like a red stripe atop the steering wheel and a pair of lovely, but manually adjustable and non-heated, Recaro seats, among others. It's a fairly cohesive package striking a solid balance between meaningful performance upgrades and properly aggressive looks. Drawbacks? Well, there are a few. Sit down, this might take a while. The Z Mismo shows much of its age inside. 
it cocooned you rather well, as a sports car should, but the infotainment system is dated and not as intuitive as others out there. You've got Bluetooth, USB connectivity, GPS navigation and radio, and, er, that's about it. No Apple CarPlay or Android Auto here. On the flip side, the physical buttons to adjust the infotainment, radio and HVAC systems are an absolute breeze to use. Storage space isn't exactly sparse, but the Z isn't commodious either. The rear lift gate exposes 6.9 cubic feet of storage space, about the same as a Subaru BRZ with its rear seats folded up, and there are a couple of shelves and pockets behind the seats. Speaking of the seats, you'll have a tough time squeezing your hand between the nook of the door and the seat to adjust it. It can be an exercise in frustration, so it's best to make any adjustments with an open door. Active safety features aren't exactly a priority for the Z either. The standard backup camera is useful considering the view out the rear is all but useless, yet that's about it. No reverse sensors. No blind spot monitors. No automatic braking. No adaptive cruise control. Number 360 degree camera, unlike other Nissans. You'll find more standard kit on a loaded cash car. It's either a blessing or a curse, depending on how you look at it. And then there's the price. The Zenismo costs just over $48,000, and it comes one way, fully loaded. At this point, $48K buys you a lot in the six-cylinder, two-door, rear-drive, sporty car realm, the 3.6 LV6 powered Chevrolet Camaro 1LE would like to have a word with you, or even a base BMW M240i. It's also worth noting $48K gets you into a Ford Mustang GT, equipped with the performance package and a 435 horsepower V8. Few of those competitors, however, offer a driving experience as direct as the Z. Sure, most competitors feature gizmos and gadgets that can tailor the driving experience to make it more engaging, but it's just not the same and that's exactly what's so endearing about this car. As a cohesive whole, the Z is a breath of fresh air, an age trap warrior that's refreshingly simple, rewarding, mechanical, and one that can still fight. Admittedly, the Nismo kit is certainly tantalizing on its own, but the price tag is a serious detractor. Instead, you'll want the base Z starting at $29,998, the car is a blank canvas, waiting to be transformed to suit exactly what the driver wants. Fewer and fewer cars today deliver on that promise, and when the 370Z as we know it is gone, whether it evolves into some sort of turbocharged coupe, adapts a hybrid powertrain, or heaven forbid, disappears from Nissan's lineup altogether, it will be sorely missed. Subaru is maturing quite significantly as a brand and while it still has a youthful and exuberant, or is that delinquent? Side to it in the form of the BRZ Sports Coupe, the rest of the brand's products have shed their skateboard sneakers and t-shirts in favor of loafers and lounge shirts. This may have annoyed some Impreza WRX and STI fans, but then again Subaru has long hung up its rally boots and gloves and its future success can no longer hinge on a bygone motorsport era. As we mentioned in our road test of the legacy sedan a while ago, the company has changed tack and is a different outfit to what it was a decade ago. Now pandering to a slightly less sporty and more refined audience, the new Impreza and the XV have moved further upstream compared to the outgoing models. In fact, the variants are important models for the mark as they are the first to be built on its all-new global platform that will underpin all future Subaru models. A mix of high tensile steel and other lighter metals, the platform is said to be so advanced it already conforms to the safety requirements of the year 2025. There is therefore a great deal of expectation around its performance. While the previous generation of Imprezas were only offered here in high-performance WRX and STI variants, Subaru SA marketing manager Ashley Lazarus says the new Impreza is a far superior proposition than the model it replaces. 
He says the new platform has allowed designers to push the envelope that much further in terms of refinement and he has assured us that the new model goes down the road with a more resolved polish. We are yet to drive the new model, but Motor News will soon put it through its paces to see if we agree with Lazarus's positive sentiments. Substantial At face value, the vehicle looks far sharper and more substantial than the outgoing model and has decent leg and headroom and boot space. The cabin has plusher materials and a slightly more premium layout and finish, similar to that we had experienced in the Legacy. It also comes with the company's latest 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system replete with TomTom Tom navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto app support, which essentially mirror your smartphone interface onto the car's screen. Motivation will come in the form of a 2.0L direct injection, normally aspirated petrol engine making 115 kilowatts and 196 newton meters through a CVT continuously variable transmission, and the company's now inherent symmetrical all-wheel drive. While overseas markets will also receive a hatch variant to take on the Volkswagen Golf, SA will only get the sedan, which has been a staple over the years except for the WRX and ST versions in 2007, but these did not go down too well. Arguably one of the big news items is that the Impreza and the XV will be the first local models to feature the company's EyeSight driver assistance technology. It includes pre-collision warning, braking and throttle control, and also comes with lane keeping and swaying assistance, as well as adaptive cruise control. Avoidance the system uses two cameras located on either side of the rear view mirror to scan the road ahead for impending changes in traffic. The system autonomously assists the driver to avoid any potential collisions. While the items are not new to the market per se, they are certainly new to the Supremium C to D segment of the market. As such, the system has managed to place the Impreza and the XV at the top in the US-based Insurance Institute for Highway Safety Ratings. To receive a 2016 Top Safety Pick Plus, a vehicle must earn good ratings in five crashworthiness tests and an advanced or superior rating for front crash prevention. According to the Institute, 2016 Albanian Lex Subaru vehicles with EyeSight received a superior rating the highest possible, for front crash prevention. Subaru SA says the system will only be available in the Impreza and the XV as of September, so models sold locally before then will not be equipped with the system. At our 399,000, including a 3-year-75,000 km maintenance plan and a 3-year-100,000 km warranty, the Impreza is priced on a par with the Hyundai Elantra Sport, which offers more power, 150 kilowatts and 265 newton meters, courtesy of a turbocharged 1.6L engine. The XV, meanwhile, is priced from R385,000 to R439,000. Of course, we are yet to drive either model to form a more informed opinion, so we will reserve our verdict on the new offerings until such time.